This is a probability scenario that follows a binomial distribution. And in fact, we have a formula that can help us to immediately calculate for the probability for this particular problem. And that formula can be found inside our formula sheet. And it is here. It is specifically for this portion, binomial distribution. Let me write down this formula. This formula says that if I want the number of successes to be x, then it is going to be out of n number of trials, we are going to choose x number of successes. And the probability of success will happen x number of times and 1 minus p, which is going to be the probability of failure, will happen n minus x number of times. So this is a formula that, can, that I can make use of to try to calculate for this. But this question is simple enough for us to actually try to derive it from scratch so that we can attempt to get this formula, get a, get a calculation that simulates this formula so that we can understand this formula even more meaningfully. And I think this is one good way for us to get used to binomial distribution. This is one good way for us to be learning binomial distribution. So let's give it a try. Let's try to calculate this probability from scratch. So looking at the way this question is being phrased, I think to organize the information that is given to me, I'm going to try to use a probability tree. So the situation that is given to me, I see two possible scenarios. When the girl pick a ball from the box, it will be the girl either picking a red colored box a red colored ball or the girl picking a non-red colored ball. Okay, so the first branch that I'm going to draw will be using S, success, to be representing the girl picking a red colored ball and F, failure, to be one that the girl is not be able to pick, the girl is not able to pick a red colored ball. So we have this and according to what the question says, the probability of the girl picking a red colored ball for an attempt is 0 0.1, which means that to not be able to pick a red colored ball, the probability is going to be 1 minus 0 0.1. The girl will be attempting to pick five times, and according to what the question says, the girl will be replacing the ball back into the box, which means that for the second time that she picks success, fail, the probability of her getting a red colored ball and the probability of her not getting a red colored ball will remain the same. In fact, this will go on for five attempts. So let's say success, fail again, this will be 0 0.1, this will be 1 minus 0 0.1. And if I were to have success, fail, success, fail, finishing up five layers of branches to simulate the five attempts that a girl is picking the red colored ball. So you know the successes will still remain the same, the failures will still remain the same, this will still be 1 minus 0 0.1, this will be still 0 0.1. And we can still draw more branches, but let us try to think a little bit about the situation first, okay? We are trying to calculate for the probability that x is equal to 3, which means that we want there to be 3 successes. And for the set of branches that I have drawn so far, 3 successes will be this, 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 and then 2 failures. So for this set of branches, the probability is going to be S, 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 F, F. It will be 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, which is going to be 0 0.1 to the power of 3. Then 1 minus 0 0.1 times 1 minus 0 0.1. So we have a 1 minus 0 0.1 to the power of 2. So this will be one of the cases that when we add all the possible cases together, right? I'm going to get this. I'm going to get my answer for this. So another possible case will be me trying to, you know, like, filter out another set of branches. And that other set of branches possibly can be something that is like this. Um, let's say success, success, fail, success, fail. Okay, I just need to make sure that there are three successes in the set of branches that I'm picking. But if you were to look at the probability, the probability actually remains exactly the same because it's going to be 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 1 minus 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 1 minus 0 0.1. So it will still be 0 0.1 to the power of 3 and then with the two failures, it will still be 1 minus 0 0.1 to the power of 2. So if there were to be a way for me to not having to manually list down all the possible outcome, and yet I'm able to know how many times I'm going to be listing down the set of branches, what I can then do is to try to calculate this probability as that number, the number of times that I'm going to be listing down the branches, multiplied by the probability 0 0.1 to the power of 3, 1 minus 0 0.1 to the power of 2. Because for all the set of branches, the probability remains the same. And the way that we are going to be finding out how many times I'm going to be listing down those set of branches, right, it's actually quite easy because 
As in like, we are not going to do it manually. And it is actually quite easy because we can actually imagine this instead of listing down all the possible branches, right? This as arranging the five letters, S, 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 F, F. Arranging these five letters will be five factorial. And then since three of the letters are the same, three successors, so I'm going to divide this by three factorial. Two failures, two other letters, they are the same. So I'll divide this by two factorial. And if I were to just take a quick look at our formula sheet again, we actually have another formula that is so suitable for us to try to look at this five factorial over three factorial times two factorial. And that can be found under the binomial expansion section of your formula sheet. And specifically here, here it says that when we have an n factorial divided by r factorial multiplied by n minus r factorial, it is n choose r. When we have an n factorial divided by r factorial multiplied by n minus r factorial, we have a n choose r. We have a, in this case, 5 choose 3. So it is 5 choose 3, 0 0.1 to the power of 3, 1 minus 0 0.1 to the power of 2. And if I can just extend this to apply to a situation which is not just limited to 5 attempts, how about, how about we are looking at this as n number of attempts that the girl is going to be picking from the box. So if I can just imagine this to continue, okay, all the way until we have n attempts. And if we were to also try to imagine the probability as a more generic number instead of 0 0.1, let's assume it to be represented by p, which means that here will be 1 minus p. What do you think is going to be the probability? when x is equal to 3. So using this as our inspiration, we are going to try to code this. That will be, okay, if I have to look at this again, it is going to be out of the five attempts, we are going to be choosing three of them to be successes. And the probability of success happening three times, the probability of failure happening two times, two times is like 5 minus 3. Okay, 5 minus 3 successes, I should have uh, two failures. So if I can apply that to here, it is going to be out of n attempts, we are going to be choosing three of them to be successes. The probability of success now is p instead of 0 0.1. So the probability of success will happen three times. The probability of failure will happen n minus three number of times. So if I were to generalize this even further, not just specifically three successes, but in general, what, we, what if we have x number of successes, then it will be out of n number of trials, we are going to choose x number of successes and the probability of success is going to happen x number of times and the probability of failure will happen n minus x number of times and this is the binomial distribution formula that we have inside our formula sheet.